It's a public relations blitz like we haven't seen in years. As a flotilla of boats attempts to sail to Gaza to deliver aid and break the siege, Israel is busy with its own goodwill campaign. At this impromptu press conference given by the army department responsible for transferring goods into Gaza, the message was simple. The flotilla is unnecessary because there is no humanitarian crisis in Gaza. According to the United Nations, 80% of the population in Gaza is poor, 60% are unemployed, 75% are insecure. Every major international organization from Amnesty International to the Red Cross, Human Rights Watch, I can go on, has called a humanitarian crisis. We know the, uh, the database that uh, you introduce, but I think that uh, uh, this is not uh, an uh, indication of uh, any crisis in the street. A lie? 80%? That's, that no, no, it's not a lie. It's not a lie. We know that uh, uh, more than 70% uh, from the population uh, in the street is under the, uh, the poor rate, but I think that uh, uh, this is part of, uh, of, uh, of this uh, arena. <laughs> Next, journalists were taken for a tour around Kerem Abu Selim, one of the few terminals into Gaza Israel hasn't shut down. The point of all this is to show us all the goods that enter Gaza through Israel. The authorities have also given us this fact sheet dazzling us with the hundreds of thousands of tons that enter Gaza almost every day from Israel. The problem is nowhere on the sheet of paper does it actually tell us uh, or compare how much Gaza gets to actually how much Gaza needs. So let's do the missing math. According to the army, 156,000 tons of food has been delivered in the last six months. That means around four kilos of food per Gazan per week. But the point is not the volume of food, but the type being allowed in, say the UN. Especially the lack of fresh vegetables and protein that's causing malnourishment. The army claimed this year they allowed 6,000 people to leave Gaza for medical reasons. But what about those who were denied exit? According to the UN, since the start of the siege, 40% of those who apply for medical permits aren't granted them. I can give you the document that was... I put that to the army who conceded over 1,000 patients have been prevented from leaving this year. They also didn't refute the UN claim that four Palestinians died last year waiting for permits to exit Gaza for medical reasons. And it goes on. The government press office recently sent journalists the menu of a restaurant in Gaza in a tongue-in-cheek effort to prove there's no food shortage. But according to the restaurant's owner, more than 70% of his food is smuggled from Egypt via the tunnels, which also means it's expensive and out of reach for the vast majority of the population. To press the point further, the media office also provided video of Gazans eating at the restaurant. But one of the diners is Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas, who hasn't set foot in Gaza since the siege began three years ago. Away from the statistics, shows and spin lies the real Gaza Strip. 1.7 million people trapped inside a 40-kilometer-long ghetto. If the flotilla arrives, this is the Gaza activists will see. And when they go, this is what they'll leave behind. Shireen Tadros Al Jazeera on the Israeli Gaza border.